What's happening guys? My name is Nicholas Renault and in this video we're going to be taking a look at instant segmentation using a model called Mask RCNN. So this means that we'll be able to segment ourselves from different objects within a particular frame and we're going to be doing it in real time using OpenCV and a webcam. Let's take a deeper look as to what we'll be going through. So in this video, we're going to be doing three key things. So specifically, we're going to be leveraging the mask RCNN model to perform something called instance segmentation. So if you've seen an object detection walkthrough or if you've seen an image classification walkthrough, this is sort of like the next level. So rather than just detecting a or classifying an image or detecting an object, this takes it one step further and actually traces out the shape of that particular object within a particular frame. So in order to do this, we're going to be leveraging a library called Pixellib. So Pixellib works really, really well. So we're going to be installing that. We're then going to capture real time video using our webcam and then we're going to segment objects in real time and perform our instant segmentation. Let's take a look as to how this is all going to work. So as I was saying, first up, what we're going to be doing is installing Pixellib from Python. So this is just a straight up pip install, pretty simple. Then what we'll do is we'll use OpenCV to capture our frames in real time, pretty similar to what we've done for our other real time detection videos. And then last but not least, we're going to apply our mask our CNN overlay to be able to mask out our image. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so in order to go and perform our instant segmentation, there's going to be three key things that we're going to walk through. So as per usual, we're going to take this step by step and all the code for the full tutorial is going to be available in the description below so you can pick it up and run with it. Now, in this particular case, our first step is going to be to install and import our dependencies. Sorry, I've just stepped into that. Then what we're going to do is set up our model. So this is where we're going to load up a pre-trained mask RCNN model. So which already has pre-trained, uh, which already has pre-trained checkpoints that we're able to leverage. Then what we're going to do is we're going to perform some real time capture with our webcam. But again, you could do this with an image or you could do it with a pre captured video. Feel free to do that if you'd like. Um, and also we're going to be doing it with a pre-trained model. So the key thing to note is that this is going to have pre-trained classes. If you'd like to see this done with a custom data set, so for example, how to go through labeling, how to go through training, as well as leveraging that particular custom trained model, do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. Now, in this particular case, we're going to start off by installing and importing our dependencies. So there's three key dependencies that we're going to need. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to be leveraging TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is our main backend. Then we're going to need Pixellib. And then the last dependency that we need is OpenCV. So TensorFlow gives us our acceleration or our deep learning platform. Pixellib gives us a nice wrapper to be able to leverage instant segmentation. And then OpenCV allows us to work with our webcam and our images. So let's go on ahead and install this. Other key thing to note is that if you wanted to run this inside of your own IDE, say for example, PyCharm or VS Code, you could do this. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that when we're using magic commands like exclamation mark, you need to run this at the command prompt. So rather than having the install inside your Python script, do that at the command prompt rather than having it in there. All right, cool. Let's go on ahead and install these dependencies. Alrighty, so in this particular case, it looks like we've got all of our dependencies pre-installed, but what we've gone and done here is written one line of code. So this one line allows us to install all of our key dependencies. So I've written exclamation mark, pip, install, and then tensorflow equals equals 2.4.1, and then tensorflow dash GPU equals equals 2.4.1. So that's gonna give us tensorflow, these two. Now, if you're, or if you've got a GPU on your machine, by all means, do make sure you go, or particularly an NVIDIA GPU, do go on ahead and install CUDA or CUDNN. If you need a hand with that, hit me up in the comments below. In this case, I've already got it pre-installed on this particular machine, so we're good to go. Our last two dependencies that we've gone and imported are Pixelib, so P-I-X-E-L-L-I-B and OpenCV-Python. So OpenCV is going to give us our webcam interactivity and Pixelib is going to give us our instant segmentation wrapper. Now that that's done, what we can then go on ahead and do is actually start importing our dependencies. So let's go on ahead and do that. So we've installed them, now we need to import them. So let's do it. Okay, so in order to bring in our dependencies, we've written three lines of code there. 
So the first one is just import pixel lib. So this is going to give us our overarching pixel lib wrapper. Then the next one is from pixel lib dot instance import instance segmentation. So you'll see in a second that we're going to be leveraging this particular function to actually load up our pre-trained checkpoints. And I'm going to show you where to get those checkpoints as well, as well as having them linked in the description below. Then our last line of code is import CV2. So this is going to give us open CV. So all up three lines of code. So import pixel lib from pixelib.instance, import instance segmentation, and then import CV2. Now, the next thing that we need to do is go on ahead and download the pre-trained checkpoints or weights for this particular mask RCNN model. So in order to do, or in order to get this, you can go on ahead to the Matterport GitHub repository. So github.com forward slash Matterport forward slash mask underscore RCNN and then forward slash releases. So from here, you've got a whole bunch of checkpoints that you can go and leverage. Now in this particular case, I believe I'm using the mask RCNN 2.0 download. So if you wanted to download these, all you need to do is hit that. But again, I'm gonna include this link in the description below. And down here, you can see that we've got this mask RCNN coco.h5 data set. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to select that and go on ahead and download it. So you can see it's now downloading down there. Let's zoom in on that so you can see it a little bit better. So mask RCNN underscore coco underscore or dot h5. So that's going to be this or those are going to be the checkpoints that you want to download. And again, I'm going to include a link to that in the description below so you can pick that up. Once that's downloaded, what you want to go on ahead and do is copy that into the same folder that you're working in. So if I show you my current folder, you can see I've already got mask underscore RCNN underscore Coco dot H5 already there. So I've already got my checkpoints there. Now, this is particularly important because when we go and load it, we want to pass through the full path to these particular checkpoints. So I've already got them there, all good to go. But again, I'm going to make this available in the description below. All the links are going to be there. So you'll be able to see that. So... Once we've gone and downloaded that model, then it's time to actually set up our model and load it into our notebook. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, so that is our segmentation model now loaded. So what I've gone and written there is two lines of code. So the first one is creating our instance segmentation model. And the second one is loading up our pre-trained checkpoints. So what I've gone and written is segmentation underscore model equals instance segmentation. And this is really leveraging the instance segmentation class that we imported up here. And then the second line is actually loading up our checkpoints. So think of this as creating the model or creating a blank shell. And then the second one is actually loading up our pre-trained checkpoints or pre-trained weights and biases. So the second line is segmentation underscore model dot load model. Let's close this. We don't need that there. So segmentation underscore model dot load model. And then to that, we've passed through the full path to our weights and biases that we went and downloaded from the Matterport GitHub repository. So in this case, it's just mask underscore RCNN underscore Coco dot H5, which represents this file that we're looking at over here. So you can see that we've got that over there. Cool. All right. So that's now loaded. Now, the next thing that we want to go on ahead and do is perform our real-time capture. So again, we're going to be using OpenCV to do this. So if you've watched any of my real-time detection videos, it's going to look really, really familiar. The only difference is that rather than using an object detection model, or rather than using body pics or one of those, or like even media pipe, we're going to be using our segmentation model, which we just set up over here. So let's go on ahead and set up our real-time capture first, and then we'll go and apply our segmentation overlay. So let's do it. Okay, so what I've gone and done there is written a pretty sort of standard set of real-time capture code, right? So this is exactly the same as any code I would have used previously to be able to perform real-time capture. So again, if you've gone through my object detection tutorial or any of the real-time media pipe tutorials, this is going to look really familiar to you. So all up there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of code that allow us to capture a real-time video feed from our webcam. But again, if you wanted to do this using an image or if you wanted to do it with a video, so for a video, all you need to do is put your path to video here 
and it'll effectively do that. In this case, we're going to be using a real-time video capture device, so we don't need to do that. If you wanted to do it on an image, all you need to do is replace this. Oh, so you're basically getting rid of your video capture loop and you're replacing it with a single image here. But again, if you want a little bit of help with that, hit me up in the comments below. Let's take a look at what we just wrote. So first up, I've grabbed our or set up our capture to our video capture device. So I've written cap equals cv2 dot video capture and then to that i've passed through video capture device zero so that represents the video capture device that represents my webcam now again you might need to play around with this depending on what video capture device represents your particular webcam in this case it's zero on my windows machine and two on my mac so again play around with it if it's not working then what we're doing is we're effectively looping through every single frame that we're getting from our webcam so what i've written is while cap is opened and then colon then we're going to read each frame from our webcam so to do that we're using cap.read then what we're doing is we're unpacking the results from that particular function so we're getting our return value plus our frame now this frame here actually represents the image at a point in time from our webcam now obviously our webcam is going to be on a loop so that image is going to be consistently refreshing but in this case that gives us our capture at that point in time then what we're doing is we're using cv2.imshow to actually go and render that image back to the user on our desktop. So to that, we're passing two key arguments. What we want our frame to be called. In this case, I'm just calling it instance segmentation. You could name it whatever you want. And then we're actually passing through the image at a point in time, which is coming from this cap.read function up here. And then everything that you can see from here is all to do with quitting out of OpenCV gracefully. So basically what we're saying is if we hit a wait key or if we hit Q on our keyboard, we're first up going to break out of the loop and then we're going to use cap.release to release our webcam. So this gracefully releases our webcam and then cv2.destroy all windows to actually go on ahead and close our frame. I, don't, I find it fascinating that we'll call it destroy all windows. Anyway. Enough messing around. Let's go on ahead and run this. So if I go and hit shift enter, this should effectively open up a little pop up towards the bottom of our screen and we should be able to see a real time video capture. So that's looking all well and good. So you can see I've got myself on the screen. So this actually represents Python grabbing our real time video feed using our webcam. Pretty cool, right? So again, nothing too crazy there. We've done that before. So what we can do to quit out of this is just hit Q and that's going to close it down so again this is going to allow us to gracefully close our frame now what we want to do is actually go on ahead and apply a little bit of instant segmentation goodness which is what we did all of this stuff for so let's go ahead add our last two lines and we'll actually be able to apply our instant segmentation Okay, that's all we really need to apply to perform our segmentation. It's pretty lightweight. I like how quick the, that you're able to work and operate with this library. So what we've then gone and done is we've gone and added two additional lines of code to our real-time capture cell. So what we've gone and written is segmentation underscore model dot segment frame. Now there's a whole bunch of different functions that you can access from this segmentation model. So you can choose to segment a frame, segment an image, segment target classes. So if you're segmenting an image, I believe that works better. It'll actually pick up the image and dump it out. When you're doing stuff in real time, I believe the best method to use is segment frame. But again, if you find out any more information on that, hit me up in the comments below. Happy to have a chat. Cool. So segmentation model or segmentation underscore model dot segment frame. And then to that, I'm passing through one argument and one keyword argument. So I'm passing through the frame that we're getting from our webcam from up here. So again, if you had a different image, that's effectively where you'd be passing that in. And then I'll pass through a second keyword argument, which is show underscore B boxes equals true. So if we actually take a look at the different arguments we can pass to this. So we can choose to show our different uh, bounding boxes, we can segment our target classes, extract our segment objects, save our extracted objects. You can output the image as well. So if you wanted to output a particular image to a particular file path, you could do that as well in real time. But again, you've got a whole bunch of different keyword arguments that you can pass through over here. Pretty cool, right? Now, in this case, we're pretty happy with our setup. So what we're going to then go on ahead and do is extract our image result from this res variable. So everything that we're written over here is being stored in a variable called res. 
then what we need to do in order to extract our image, which has then been segmented, is grab the second result, which represents index one. So res, and then inside of square brackets, we're passing through the number one, and we're storing that value inside of a variable called image. Now, as of right now, we're not gonna see those instant segmentation results to the screen because right now in the cv2.imshow method, we're still passing through our baseline frame. But if I change this to image and run this now, we should get our real-time segmentation actually happening. So let's give it a sec. Ideally, we should get our pop-up and then we'll be able to see it. So this is a good sign. And it looks like we've got a bit of an issue. Let's take a look at that. Editing Nick here. So that particular error that you just saw on the screen was caused because I had my GPU completely utilized on my particular machine. Now in order to solve this, all I had to do was stop the other notebook that I actually had running, which had already preloaded Pixelib, and then kicked it off again. And then this happened. And there you go. So you can see our instant segmentation is running. So as soon as you run it, you'll get a little pop-up and you'll see that it's able to start segmenting. In this case, it's detecting our microphone as skateboard, probably not the most accurate. What happens if we throw up our phone? You can see it's accurately classifying our phone. Pretty cool, right? Now, if I take down the green screen, you're gonna be able to see a whole bunch of additional stuff, which is segmented. And there you go, it looks like a bit of a rave in my apartment. So you can see it's accurately detecting the couch. It's detecting a little potted plant somewhere over here. It's saying it's broccoli. It's detecting the potted plant over there, as well as a whole bunch of chairs, the dining table. Is it getting the TV? I can't see. It looks like it might be saying refrigerator, but it looks like it's doing pretty well. So that in a nutshell is how you can go and perform instant segmentation in real time using Pixelib and OpenCV. Now in this particular case, we went and did three key things. So we went and installed and imported our dependencies. We then went and set up our instant segmentation model and downloaded our key checkpoints from Matterport. And then we went and performed our real time capture, which allows us to do awesome stuff like this. And on that note, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell and let me know what you thought. And also let me know what you'd like to use instant segmentation for. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.